Hey guys, this is Travis and Kyle Bayless with Beyond Pipe Bowler Blog. I have done a few videos on holidays and usually they're pretty negative. In case you haven't seen them, I usually do not do well during the holidays and it seems like this past Easter, I did not do well at all. I was not very suicidal, but the sensory overload issues came back. I haven't had them for like 11 or 12 years. And uh, I'm at a point where I've already kind of complain with my psychiatrist and things like that and the nurse practitioner ended up reaching out to me uh, my psychiatrist his nurse or one nurse practitioner reached out to me uh, saying that I you know the only option is to do a gene test and last resort is TMS which is kind of an electrostatic uh, therapy to the brain transcranial messaging maybe or something and to be honest with you, I put it off for two years, and primarily because the, the <coughs> excuse me, the business is like 45 minutes away, and I felt like it wasn't worth it. But now I'm making considerations in a way regarding holidays. Like I said, the Easter was very not pleasant, and leading up to that, it was not good at all. I was starting to experience dry eyes. At first, it was like very sharp sounds like dog noises or utensils were kind of upsetting my ear and then it got worse to where the light fluorescent lights are still bugging me and I do a little bit better here I actually even went to the ER to kind of get a physical evaluation but I kind of knew it was just a, a bipolar related issue for a while we're kind of stemming that maybe I have like autism or some type of spectrum but my family at least my parents and my sister does not really agree that i have it except for me but regarding this like i said i've been really struggling the low energy though i don't have suicidal thoughts or ideations the low energy and wanting to lay around all the time has been very problematic lately and like i said maybe eight months ago i started a new drug called capillite a new antipsychotic because the previous one was Losing, losing efficacy and was causing suicidal ideations early in the morning, which is very unpleasant. Anyways, the last month things went downhill from there and I'm suspecting it's the holiday. Uh, though I'm not certain that the sensory overload is related to my mood, but there's a likely scenario it is or a, an effective or a defective uh, side effect in terms of the medication I'm on. I had issues with Lexapro on it and Trintelix where it did induce like uh, sensory overload issues. But anyways, I'm just trying to reflect on the holiday and I had a recent dream on something about uh, the soul and I kind of looked it up and it kind of is like your well-being, your conscious well-being. And it had to do something with if you can't live for family, then it's better to live for your soul or something like that. But anyway... I was kind of analyzing that, and though I've had issues with suicidation, it seems like my body or whatever higher power or spiritual entity is telling me that it wants to keep me alive because else, if I don't be conscious, I can't have a soul or whatever. I mean, some people believe souls go to heaven or whatever, but in terms of what's alive, what's conscious, at the state of moment of being mindful, I feel like this kind of changed things in a way, and... I guess I kind of put more faith in the backing of my dreams, but in a ways I was also trying to correlate this to why I have such bad sensory issues or depression or whatever during the holidays, because uh, it didn't only happen uh, this last Christmas, which was pretty bad, but a year ago I was hospitalized Christmas Eve and day, so it was pretty bad too, and it's been getting worse and worse, and problem with that is that any life-changing events, I usually take a med to mask, which I, I'm okay with it. If there's a med that'll kind of cover the wound or whatever, all right, I'm okay with it. There's a lot of people that think, well, you got to uncover the wound first and then let it heal or whatever, and you can't just put a band-aid on it. And for a while, from like 2010 to 12, I was very, very reluctant to answer meds because the side effects like akathisia, somnolence, some, some antipsychotics I tried in a year was very, very post-traumatic and 
I was very, very angry at the psychiatrist. I never want to go back, but finally I did try to lithium, and ever since then, kept exploring meds. And it seems to be after 30 different meds, I kept trying, and I've been so resistant lately that I, I absolutely have to figure out this this holiday thing because if I can't recover, then I'm kind of shit out of luck. So I don't know what else to do. So I'm trying to be insightful and non-judgmental of the situation and part of me feels like I feel like holidays is like preparation for a memorial and since I'm pretty close to my parents mostly my dad I almost feel like leading up to that like is personally just a a practice until they die and maybe deep down I'm very very uncomfortable very depressed about the situation I almost feel once they die that maybe there will be some relief, though I do know that there's a pretty high elevated risk right before they die because the preparation can take some time. What do you mean Funeral. Relief? Because they'll be dead and I won't have to keep thinking about like when they're gonna oh. die or things like that. So I feel like maybe that's what's causing. I already was insightful to the group chat and my mom said something. She said that maybe we need like something out of her house, but I don't know. It still takes time to put up Christmas lights and things like that and prepare for whatever christmas -y thing that Dad does. Uh, I don't know, I'm just trying to find a better way and solution to what's going on. I just thought I kind of list my insight on why I feel I might have such a hard time during these traumatic holidays. I don't know if Kyle has something to add to that or do you feel like that, no, it's time you just have to grow up and just accept that they're gonna die, or you won't be able to accept that they're gonna die, or you think you are? Maybe if I, maybe if I end die. up keep talking about it, it'll just get easier. See, I don't even know if it's actually the cause of it. I'm just trying to formulate some type of a hypothesis or solution to, a resolution to, maybe so I can cope a little better during the holidays. So this time it was really very, very, very hard to cope. I'm still having like issues with sensory issues as well. I think the lights are kind of bright today, so I don't know. It's kind of not feeling too well. And like recently, I ended up having this, these really, really strange dreams. Like, I feel like in a way it's kind of philosophical. Uh, like it says something about like being humble or do the 80-20. Like it specifically said that I had to give up 20% of my possessions or what, or not possessions, but like income or, or just some type of asset that I had to give away, and I don't know why, it just showed up, and it was kind of weird, and these other, these other weird, like, dream experiences, and being humble, and I remember that being in the dream, and it, it's kind of the total opposite of, of kind of, like, my ability to be confident, so I'm, it makes me think twice, and I've been so concentrated on this last holiday, and analyzing it, that it's kind of making me a little more depressed. I feel like, uh, in a way, talking about it's making it worse, but I don't know, maybe down the road it'd be easier. Because I just know in 2014, I had three hospitalizations leading up to 2015, six months DBT, a partial, and it's pretty miserable since dad almost died. So it just, that must have really affected me because I almost feel like uh, the first two hospitalizations were related to the fact a life-changing event of not being able to last at a corporate job. The second one is 2012, not being able to hold a, a serious relationship. And 2014 was my dad about to die. 2017 was, or 2015 was kind of the analyzation of the post thing of what happened. Uh, 2017 when it just wasn't doing too well because of a med change from lithium to lamictal because I thought it was causing weight gain. Anyways, that led to 2022 and here I am at a crossroads and maybe I can't, I can't seem to cope with life-changing events. So I, I had a dream where you're in the hospital and I was going crazy and then my family didn't know why I was going crazy and then I ended up becoming a dark elf that I became evil. Boy, I did have a dream that he was a Grim Reaper, I and guess. My brother had a dream about me being the Grim Reaper, which I just painted. Oh no, I just feel like dreams are actually Evil. supposed to dreams are actually supposed to prepare you for like like events that that may endanger you. 
and some people think it's total garbage but part of me understands that whether it's true or not it it does really affect my mood at, during the day in a positive or negative way depending on how much I remember and the fact I'm remembering so much of these guests it's possible that Mets can cause lucid dreaming but yeah I don't know I just I don't know it's kind of tiring just talking about it I don't know where else to lead off I just felt like this is what I want to talk about. Do you feel like with the lifestyle that you live now, where you could just where you lay around, do you think you'll be able to do that in the future? Likely scenario, yes. But I mean, <laughs> yes. But that has three thousand payments. You can't do that. I don't know. That's my opinion. I guess I don't really think about it. You Maybe used down to the it, road. You used to about the future. Now you don't care. Yeah, I just kind of think in the moment. It's like when you feel like shit, you just want to fucking lay around. You don't want to fucking think about the future. I mean, you and I had an argument about something where I wanted you to work harder on the music videos and stuff, but you don't want to. Yeah, so that's why I feel like there's no future because if it's not a money maker, then it just seems almost pointless. I don't know. Kyle's that offense where he feels like he needs a full time job and wants to kick my ass to get one. I think I'll just let him get a full time job and I'll watch from the sidelines. I think mother needs to work harder. That's my opinion. I don't know. But yeah, so that's kind of the gist of it. I don't know what else I fucking wanted to talk about. I just felt like, excuse the words, but I just felt like I had to talk about something and why. I've been laying was, around a lot and depressed today. I, was, I been have been very, depressed, man. These past Feeling two weeks like shit, I've been dude. feeling pretty terrible. I was very, very, I was very, very affected about my experience yesterday in a negative way because I see like all these creatives. It wasn't that. I didn't give a shit whether I was I was successful or not. I just imagine all these people on all five floors are trying to make and pursuing a creative in the art field Some and of them knowingly good. know that they may not be able to sell anything. And I just I just felt like that could be me. If I didn't have my dad or situation just to be able to do what I want, I'd be forced to be that living city. like that homeless man outside in the library just playing games. I don't know, it just feels like my situation would change and I wouldn't be too happy being a creative in that little crushed up apartment. So, I don't so know. So would you do a regular job then? That's the thing, it still doesn't motivate. If I feel like depressed, why would having a job motivate me? If I'm down, I don't feel like it gives me energy. I gotta have some energy, some purpose to get me going. If I thought the creative stuff was gonna get me going, and that kind of altered my, my perspective on things and how difficult it really is to make, be a successful artist or musician, whatever you call it. I mean, these people probably dedicated their life, put aside family, put aside relations, maybe divorce or schooling or maybe had schooling and had to take a huge risk just to know whether they ain't going to make it or not. And it just made me feel down. And I don't know, I just did a rap. I've been rapping a lot lately in bed. It's sensory issues just made me want to sleep and lay around. But. So I've been watching videos about people that experience the dark night of the soul it means it's a dissolution of the ego where everything seems meaningless what you thought meant something new now it doesn't and you just pretty much not care about life but they say it's even though it's like one of the worst feeling experiences it's also a time where absolute change can happen and that's that's what sometimes a grim reaper represents it's not just death it's it also transition. represents transition and transformation, Cycle. so it's not necessarily evil, even though I joke about it. But like maybe Travis dreamt about me being the Grim Reaper because I'm I'm the one that has to bring about change. But I don't know. I have to also change myself because I also feel like since this creative stuff, especially like the CAD stuff, I feel like uh, I'm becoming more isolated. I'm not even really interested in interacting with people. Like I was mentioning to my girlfriend who was trying to interact with other people, I just wasn't interested in, I'm, I'm just not. I'm not interested in investing myself in other people because I just feel like it's, I don't feel con connected anymore. I mean, the really, stu the really stupid thing last night was like, I guess the whole time I was going to joke with Kyle about like, uh, one of the, the, no, one of the trainers, I was, he, he was, he was kind of like, uh, insinuating that his boss was his dad and I was insinuating well your dad's not here but your daddy is and I end up saying like he's my son and Someone and like I ain't paying for like child support and then it ended up being like the weird I was thing gonna is I was actually gonna end up saying like uh, uh, 
don't do any funny business with your stepsis. The weird and thing is, is I that had this weird ass dream that made me think, oops, that's bad because there's this dream like a 13 year old, I was this 13 year old boy, I was this like 10 or 12 year old girl and he ended up sticking it in me and it made me feel like, wow, that's rape, dude. You have a lot of, I'm like, you have holy a lot shit, of- that ain't, I guess that, that stepsis joke ain't funny. <laughs> So it made me feel horrible because it felt like don't rape. You, don't you have a lot of dreams where I stick my dick in your mouth or your ass and well, hate it or brother, or David? My brother and like Even my Nancy, my girlfriend. Yeah. Like she takes a dildo and stuff it's up me and it's kind of traumatic. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I mean... Yeah, I guess my the way I get is being like the weird thing is egotistical with my body or making stupid ass humor jokes that people really. That's a weird thing though. Is that jokes, even though you're so miserable at home on the outside when you're interacting with people, you're actually pretty friendly. Yeah, because I just, feel like you're more friendlier than I am. I, I guess I know. have to because that's kind of what elevates my mood and it's kind of a shitty ass way to be able. Do to you be feel happy, like you're still connected with the CAD community? And I became so I became or, totally disassociated with it due to my experience in the, yeah, at, talk the about at the church. church like I don't know I was just supposed to play perform and it went fuck and it sorry I keep swearing but it went miserable because I couldn't I was just so tired I couldn't do it and that was the second or third time where I just couldn't do it and Colin and I both couldn't do it so we stopped playing anyways the early morning and the fact that it was holidays I'd do bad on the anyway I couldn't last at the sermon, so I ended up sleeping in the car. I came back a little bit during lunch, and interacting with the CAD community and the Korean community just made me feel like garbage. Do you feel like you have so control? I never, con- over, I never came back. Really, do you feel like you have control over your mental health and your bipolar, and do you feel like you dig yourself a hole and do you use it as an excuse? To I mean, like- to an extent, but I've been dealing with this for 14 years, and I think, well, there's got to be more than just the way I am. I mean, the way my situation. <laughs> My situation is I'm glad to believe that yes there is a biochemical thing and maybe therapy help they actually recommend you go to therapy I thought about it yeah and then I was like oh you need uh, an adoption therapist or oh they don't accept medical assistance but I'm at the point where I don't care I just want to be able to state how I am forget about my past just state what's going on in my mind right now and them give me a solution really that's all i'm asking so today uh we're going to an art thing it's actually in a nicer place i mean yesterday it, it just felt sad to me where they all lived in this rundown i mean it looked nice on the outside but the inside just looks like this rundown square little box that people hold themselves in to do art and like my brother said that just seems miserable and i'd say I'd rather just work a regular job than live like that but i don't know Anyways, we're almost here. Just thought I'd give my thoughts. I don't know if we're at a Hmong event. So this is Kyle and Travis with Hmong TV. Since CAD stories we're moving on from, we're now doing Hmong TV and we're switching cultures and we'll see if we'll find a connection here. My girlfriend is super excited. She just loves anything with Hmong. That's her culture. I mean, her dream as a little girl, she wanted to go to Thailand, she told me, and step on the same land where her family escaped from. And that's just amazing healing experience. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, she really doesn't give a shit, so it's kind of funny. <laughs> she has a trauma with Hmong people. That's her trauma. But anyway, is there anything other last words? <laughs> Did we, we pretty much just rambled on. I just basically but... bitched. I don't know. Thought By the way, I've been re-uploading podcast versions. So you also can find us on Spotify and everywhere else. So I'm kind of excited for this event. We'll see how things go. All right. Have a pleasant trip. And this is... Chaotic and travesty. This is another anger Asian asshole advice and we'll let you guys go Please like comment share and subscribe and hit the bell button and hit the Alert. The, the alert button for future updates. All right, take care. Bye. Bye Hello, this is Travis and Kyle. We are both artists and we focus on hyper-realistic drawings, acrylic work, airbrush work. So I also wanted to mention that we actually have our own channel as well. Our channel is Korean Adoptee Stories and we interview a lot of adoptees. Uh, we found that with adoption there's quite a few adoptees that struggled unfortunately and did not have the best kind of life and a lot of them had mental health issues. We felt like it was important because us we can kind of struggle with that. 